To sand or not to sand? That is the question of this video. Yeah, new mug. So, so, before we do anything, my buddy David Bowen, who you know and love from my other mug, the one with the iconic smile. So I reached out to David recently and I said, hey, people been asking, when can you get a mug with a beard? And he said, ain't no thing, I gotcha. And he made me this and it's so freaking good, guys. It's, now listen, this guy ain't going away, all right? He's a legend, he's wonderful, he's great. But this guy, you gotta mix him in sometimes now because it's just, I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Hand-painted rivets actually etched number pads on there and i mean i mean come on who knows where it's gonna go but this this new part of the collection if nothing else featured in today's video thank you david as always i'll leave a link down below if you guys want to go pick up his wares and support people who are making things by hand now about surface prep. There is, and perhaps has been for the last hundred years, this debate going on about whether or not to sand something or to plane something. Do you get a better quality surface off a plane? Do you get a more uniform and absorb, absorbative? A surface that absorbs more finish evenly off a sander, a debate that's been going on since the invention of the sander. So, is there really a marked difference in the end as to how you perceive the finished piece? Which techniques do I use in my pieces in specific circumstances and how do you get those same results in your workshop? So let's dive into it. We've got two identical pieces. They're even book matched. So they are quite literally identical. They're from the same board. They're from the same section of the tree. They're just opened up like that. So now everything is flat. Everything is square. Everything has mill marks off the joiner and the planer. And we are going to go head to head between this Makita Random Orbit Sander and my old Stanley four and a half. So a couple of quick points of note before I actually get to sanding. Number one, I'm just using this Makita. There are other options out there that have much better dust collection. I'm not going to name the green company because somebody's gonna get mad at me, but I do have that sander right over there, but I'm choosing to use this one because it's more affordable for what we're going through right now. And lastly, as far as the grit goes, I really never go below 180, or if I need to dip down 150 kind of at its lowest, I got a piece of 180 on here right now. I'm gonna go through the process, then I'm gonna switch to 220, go through the process again. And that's really all the sanding I do on my pieces. So that's what we're gonna do here, see what kind of result we can get. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to deal with these corners before we can actually put some finish on here. So in order to do that with sandpaper is I'm gonna take my same sanding block and I'm just gonna go right at a 45 and just maybe three swipes or so, just, just enough to break the edge. So one, it's comfortable to touch and two, you actually can apply finish to that corner whereas a very sharp corner is not going to allow finish to adhere. So same thing on the other side.
just like that. So, we've got our sanded piece ready and prepped for finish. This was probably, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes if I'm a gambling man. Now that includes filming, but more or less, I would say 10 minutes for surface prepping a piece this size. All four sides, broken corners, not worrying about end crane. What about our planed piece though? Let's dive into this. So just a few brief things to note before I actually get to hand planing. Number one, yes, it takes time to sharpen up your hand plane. So that is a time investment to be aware of. However, you do need to consistently buy sandpaper. So, you know, number two, part of the reason I wanted to do this video with this particular piece of wood is because these knots and defects are really difficult to work with hand tools for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the grain is moving in all kinds of directions around those knots. So you may get differentials in grain, which could lead to tear out and can be difficult to work. Secondly, the differences in density between the normal piece of wood and the knots is gonna be quite great. So it could affect the plane differently. And both of those things are things that should be considered when debating whether or not to use a hand plane or a sander in any given situation. But we're gonna dip into this hand plane and see what it can do. This is very curious and this happened on the main panel and I'm very glad it happened again because this exact thing is why I wanted to make this video. In planing this surface, this is the first surface I planed. It's beautiful, it's nice and smooth, everything is great. I'm getting beautiful thick shavings off of this surface so I know everything is working correctly and I'm getting a clean surface off the plane. But on this surface, this surface is a little bit different. These are the shavings that I was getting off of this surface. You can see a very clear difference between these two shavings. Nice full width, clean shavings, short, choppy, stringy. There's something off about this surface that's giving me this type of shaving. And consequently, I'm getting not a poor quality surface by any means, but I can feel mini undulations on the top of this surface. Something is a little amiss. I don't know exactly what's going on here. It could be the myriad tiny little knot holes in here. It could just be silica in this piece of wood that's showing up on the top of this surface and for some reason not on the other. I don't know, there's no way to tell, but the reason I wanted to bring this up is because early on in my career, I would have been so frustrated that something was going wrong and I would have thought it was me. Something I was doing was not working properly when in fact, Sometimes it's just the piece of wood doesn't want to cooperate. So if you see something like that, it may not be your fault. It may just be the natural process of working with an organic material that sometimes it says, I'm going to be a pain in the butt today. So don't get discouraged. The thing that we chose to love, wood, it can be fickle, it can be a pain in the butt, and that's just the way of it sometimes. So the next question is, how do we dress this surface that has some mild imperfections? Now there's a handful of ways that we could address this surface. Number one, we could use a card scraper. Number two, we could freshen up this blade and try again with a hand plane, try a different hand plane. There's any number of techniques that you can choose to employ. What I do most often, I just take a little sandpaper to it. That's it, that's all it takes. Now you may be asking yourself, Eric, what is the point of planing if you're gonna break out the sander at the end anyway? And truth is, I do usually sand my surfaces even after I plane them, but I just enjoy the process of hand planing. I enjoy using hand tools. I enjoy that, that moment of connection with the material. And so I really am using my hand planes as kind of the pre-process, the surface prep process up to 220. 
And in my opinion, you really kind of get the best of both worlds in that situation. You get the smooth, uniform surface off a random orbit sander, but you get the joy of using hand tools and you get to spend that amount of time, not with earbuds in, not with a face mask in, not with a vacuum going. You get to just be a woodworker in the shop at the bench. That being said, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this surface that was slightly imperfect and I'm going to sand it with the random orbit, the random orbit, random orbit the way I normally would. And then we are going to have three different surfaces. We're gonna have a purely hand plane surface. We're gonna have a hand plane and sanded surface and we're going to have a purely sanded surface, we can put finish on them, we can compare and contrast all three and see if there is any real difference between them. All right, it's been, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. I've let the finish soak in and I've thrown a light coat of wax on top. So while the finish isn't perfectly cured and it's not the full finishing process, you can certainly get an understanding of how this material absorbs the finish. Now, I don't know which piece is which. I don't have them labeled back here. I have them labeled up here away from me. I intentionally tried to avoid knowing which surface is which because they got all discombobulated during the finishing process. So now we're gonna see if we can identify which one is which. So let's first and foremost go by touch, see if I can feel any difference in these surfaces. Nothing, these both feel like they're sanded to me. They're perfectly smooth. I've got no differential in those surfaces. Let's see if I can see any difference in the sheen and the surface quality, nothing. They're, they're identical. This one has a little bit more open pores over here. So again, if these are book matched, which is what they are in the cabinet itself, you see how you have these flames over here. This appears darker from my angle than this does right here. That could be for a number of reasons. One, that could be the pores opening up wider and accepting more finish, which would be an indication of sanding. These look a little lighter, so that could be an indication of planing and keeping those pores nice and closed. It could also just be the way that the undulations are that these I don't know how I'm gonna do this, that these are pointed up towards me and these are pointed away from me, making these look lighter. I can't tell from this vantage point, though I do have a funny feeling this is slightly more open than this one is. So based on that, I guess I'm gonna go with saying that this is the sanded piece. Let's flip it over and see if we can see the difference on the other side. Now remember, one of these surfaces was left off the plane, and I can immediately tell that that is this surface. I can see a few streaks running this way, which would be indications of imperfections in the blade. Can I feel that? Absolutely, I can feel that. So this is definitely my plane surface, which would make this my sanded surface. Now, as far as the visual quality of the surface, there's not much. Like I can only see one streak right here and it's just because of the way that light is hitting at the right angle where it's bouncing off of that. But visually that surface is perfect. Now, I've seen on dining tables where you leave just a plain surface so you have that tactile experience. And I'm really a fan of that. Now these were much deeper undulations kind of made with a very rounded or almost scrub plane. And I really like the tactile experience you get off of that on something like a tabletop surface. I thought it was an interesting thing and it's something I plan to employ in the future, but the quality of the surface and how it's absorbing the finish, identical. And so we come all the way back to our original question, to sand or not to sand? And the answer is, eh. Like so many other things in this craft, night, like everything else in this craft, it's entirely up to you. What do you enjoy doing? What's the most efficient process for you? What is your end goal? Is your goal to make products to sell and you need to be time efficient? Is your goal to be in your shop by yourself, enjoying your moment, and you just like the sound and process of using hand tools? So at the end of the day, what makes you smile? And if what makes you smile is a combination of the two, a bastardization if some of you want, which is to say using hand planes for all of the prep work and then finishing them off with sandpaper so you have that uniformity, that's totally fine as well. There's no right answer. There's only make. So friends, that's that for today. I will say, I will say, 
This box is going to be beautiful. Looking at this, this is the first time I've seen this big leaf maple finished. The figure in it, the color variations, oh, oh. It's going to be stunning. I can't wait to get it done, and I can't wait to get it in the hands of the clients because they're going to love it, I think. I feel good about it, I hope. But until then, friends, it's time for me to continue on with this piece so I can get it done in the next few weeks. That's the goal. I promise it's not going to linger on too much longer. And so, until next week, go make a thing and have some fun doing it. Cheers. Cheers.